We have a fun meeting planned for you today to celebrate the beginning of April. Do any of you know what April 1st is? Happy Fool's Day. April Fool's Day. Anyway, do you know what we usually do the first meeting in April that we couldn't do last April? We're going to unveil the 2022 Opportunity Quilt today. So I hope you're all excited about it. So stay tuned because it's going to be near the end of the meeting like we normally do. And then that's kind of a way to capture you for a few minutes also. Received a very nice thank you note um, from a gal named Sonia. And I don't have her last name here. But she says, Dear Santa Rosa Quilt Guild, thanks so much for the lovely quilts uh, and all the supplies. Our family is now settled into a home with a year lease. I hope to start sewing soon. We bought a platform bed with a blue headboard and the long, larger quilt fit it perfectly. I hope to see, uh, to soon meet you either live or on Zoom with much appreciation, love, Sonia. So that was a very sweet, sweet letter we received. Let's see, number three. Um, the board agreed to pay for a special event that all of you can view for free. It's the Global Quilt Connections offering a two-day series. Um, I believe it's three hours each day, May 22nd and 23rd, where you get to see various teachers give beautiful techniques in 15 minutes for each teacher. So it's something we decided uh, the board thought that this would be a great event for all of us to watch. So we'll get more information out, but I believe it's May 22nd, May 23rd for three hours each day. And the entire agree was unanimous on this. So an email will be sent to each of you on how to access this well worth presentation. Okay, remember when we were kids getting a full week of Easter break and running out of the classroom as soon as the doorbell rang? Well, remember, most students will be out of online learning this Friday and then have a week of spring break. And then they go back at the end of the break to a real school and a school building with all their friends, at least for two days a week. So I'm pretty excited about that. So just be aware, kids are gonna just be so excited and gonna be running around and because they're usually in school in the morning and for usually until like 12 or 1230. So now they're gonna be out earlier. So keep your eye out for them. But I think that uh, we're gonna have fun seeing our children and grandchildren healthier and happier. And it's gonna be nice to be around them now that we're all, most of us are getting vaccines. So let's enjoy this special time, family. Well, let's kick off the meeting with our acclaimed storyteller extraordinaire, Pam Brown. Okay, here we go. I can get rid of all these extra screens here. Good morning, it's April Fool's Day and Janelle asked me to do a fool story for you, a trickster tale. And I have two very short ones that I thought you would enjoy. Now, it's been, oh, that kind of year, uh-huh. Even the devil was getting disgruntled. He was sitting in his throne room with a big sack of walnuts next to him and he was grumbling and mumbling and cracking the walnuts and eating the meat and complaining about how much better it would be if he could find someone to open them for him. And then he had an idea. He went to his throne, not his throne room, but his treasure room, and he found a pearl, a good sized pearl. And he came back and he took a large walnut and he pried it open and he stuck that pearl inside and glued it shut. No one would have been able to see that it had been opened. And he put it on top of the sack. And then he changed himself to look like an old man with a long beard. And he went on up to the world and he sat down by the side of the road that went to the marketplace. And he waited and he waited. And pretty soon a farmer's wife came along and he said, Psst, psst, do you want a walnut? 
and she looked at him suspiciously. But she came over and peered into the sack and he said, go ahead, take one. And she reached in and she took a big one right from the top. And while he watched, she cracked it open, took the meat out, ate it and tossed the shell aside. And then she walked on down the road. Oh, he said, she must have opened the wrong one. So he took out four more and he cracked them open and he ate the meat. No pearl. He spent the rest of the day cracking walnuts open and eating the walnuts. And he never did find the pearl. So he went home in a terrible temper with a stomach ache and a bad temper. And meanwhile, the farmer's wife went to the marketplace. She came to the stall that sold butter churns and she picked out one and then she reached into her mouth. She took out the pearl and paid for it. And she went home very happy. And the little moral of that story is, oh, don't try to trick a woman. Now for my second story, we're going to travel to Burma. And the name of the story is the Tiger's Minister of State. Now, word went through the forest that the tiger, the king of the animals, was looking for a new minister of state. And so from the places where they lived, Wetwin the boar, Mayuk the monkey, and Jan the rabbit, traveling by different paths, all arrived at the tiger's gate at the same time. And they sat down and they waited for the tiger to admit them. And at last the tiger looked out and he said, who are those people? And his servant said, oh, well, it, it's wet when the boar and Mayuk the monkey and, and, and Yon the rabbit, and they're here to apply for the job of minister of state. Oh, said the tiger, let them in. And so the three animals came in and they stood there and they bowed to the tiger. Now, as you have heard, I am seeking a new minister of state. And that person must have the ability to say the right thing at the right time. And, and Boar, the boar immediately spoke up and said, I, I, I have that ability. And Mayuk the monkey said, um, I have that ability. And Jan the rabbit said, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, I have that ability. Oh, we shall see, said the tiger. Boar, step forward. And the boar stepped forward. And the tiger leaned down <sighs> and breathed on him. And then he said, well, boar, is my breath sweet or foul? Now, the tiger's breath was bad, but the boar wanted the job. And so he said, oh, majesty, your breath is sweet. It is like blossoms in springtime. Ah, said the tiger, you are a flatterer. You have no regard for the truth. You would be a danger to me and my kingdom. And he pounced on the boar and he ate him. Monkey, step forward. And the monkey came forward. And once again, the tiger leaned down. Ha! And he said, monkey, is my breath sweet or foul? And the monkey said, oh, oh, oh you, you will see, majesty, you will see that I am no flatterer. Your breath is bad. Oh, it is foul. Please do not ask me to smell it again. Ah, said the tiger, you are one who speaks the truth and speaks without regard for anyone else's feelings, you would cause dissension and arguments. 
You would be a danger to my kingdom. And the tiger pounced on him and ate him. <laughs> rabbit, step forward. And the rabbit came forward, trembling and shaking and quivering. And once again, the tiger leaned down. Ah. Rabbit, is my breath foul? As the monkey said, or bear? As the boar said. And the rabbit didn't say anything. He just trembled and twitched and his nose shivered. Well, said the tiger. Oh, uh, ma 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 uh, majesty, I am the most unfortunate of creatures. What? Uh, uh, majesty, I have a cold and I cannot smell anything one way or the other. Ah, said the tiger, you are my new minister. <laughs> For an ordinary person, a sense of smell is important, but not for one who deals in affairs of state. And so the rabbit became the tiger's minister of state. And he still is to this very day. And all day, every day, he shivers and shakes and shivers and shakes to show the tiger that he still has a cold and can't smell anything one way or the other. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. Thank you, that, Pam. Was, that was really great fun. Great fun. Um, Linda Hooper put together a wonderful showing of National Quilt Day, which was March 20th, for the quilts that were hung outside or laid over plants, whatever. It's just fabulous. So please play Linda's video. Oh dear. Okay, let me get rid of this. Here we go. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. 
So Linda Super Hooper also has put together a display of our show and, and show and tell quilts. So let's sit back and enjoy seeing all these beautiful quilts. Isn't that fabulous? Oh my gosh, I love the music too. Thank you, Linda. Super Hooper, really appreciate it. Next up, we're going to take a look at some Soa Rose with Tony Anderson. So let's hear from Tony. Please run Tony's presentation. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Good morning, Tony Anderson with Soa Row here. I'm coming to you on this beautiful Thursday with your Soa Row committee report. Here we go. So first of all, I have to apologize. You might hear some construction noise outside my house. That's just the way it is. They're finishing up this neighborhood, so I hope it doesn't bother you too much. <clears throat> this first one that was turned back in is number 19, Birds in a Basket, turned in by Elaine Ramirez. Number 23 is Hughes and Blues, turned in by Ann Nolan. Number 30 is Around the Red, White, and Blue, turned in by Carol Lamonnier. 
Number 31 is Buster Goes to Town, turned in by Carol Lemarnier. And number 25, Giving Latitude or Attitude, also Carol Lemarnier. Here we have number 26, Girlfriends for Life, turned in by Kathy Conover. And number 21, Springtime in Yellow, turned in by Ann Nolan. And then we have three orphan blocks that really need some love. They're still on row number one, so pick one out that you love and show it that they're not alone in the world. Number 28 is Around the Block. Number 29 is Beachy Keen. And number 32 is Peach Tree. Thank you, Tony. If anybody wants to adopt one of these to do a row on it, please call Tony Anderson. Okay, we have a new block of the month with Carol Lemoyne. Okay, Carol, let's hear about our new block of the month. Happy April, happy spring. Uh, I'm Carol Lemonier, half of the Block of the Month team. Joni Bellenhausen is the other half, and she is the inspiration for our Easter basket, no, not basket, bonnet. Easter bonnet um, Block of the Month. So I'm going to show you very quickly how to make this block and then show you some examples on what you can do for April. Uh, it our block comprises of very simple uh, pieces. They're two and a half inch pieces. I wrote in the instructions that you can find on the website that you can use whatever technique that you want to use for a half square triangle. You'll need four of them, two for the top and then two for the bottom. You, the first row, is two half, strike, two half square triangles, four squares, and then a band for the um, hat. And then you can have an embellishment if you want, and you can add that at any time that you want. You then have the two sides, which are two and a half by six and a half. The band is eight and a half. Then you add the last row, which again has two half square triangles and four two and a half inch squares. I have here the first part of the block. Um, and then you add the bottom row. And then finally, very simply, you add the top and the bottom, which is two and a half inch by uh, 12 and a half inches. So it's a pretty simple block. You can do it scrappy, but let me show you what other people have done because I have received some of them. Um, this is Joy's block, and what she did is she used probably K facet fabric, and so it's all one piece with the half square triangle or slip and sew flip, sew cut flip method. Then she added her band, and then voila, she's got a block. Um, Sharon Fry made it all one color, blue with a blue, uh, yeah, blue with a yellow background. Her embellishment is Rick Rack. Um, this is my favorite. This is Joni made this one. Again, it's one fabric here, but then her band is Jelly Bellies. Just in time for Easter. In terms of the embellishments, you could do brick rack, you could do lace if you want, uh, you could do these little um, pop, 
I don't know, pom poms if you want. That's kind of what I did. There's a lot of different little pom poms. You can do whatever you want. Remember, some of these embellishments might not be color fast or they might uh, melt under the iron. So try to use something that is adaptable. Anyway, simple. Uh, that's our April block of the month. And I just want to take the time to tell you that our drawing will be late April. We will actually have the drawing for our first meeting in May. So please, eat your Easter candy, all those peeps and chocolates, and then get to your sewing room, start making your blocks, and then make sure that you get them to me. You can mail them to me, bring them to my house, and then, um, or somehow, get them to me. Anyway, thank you. See you next month. Bye-bye. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol and Joni. Um, Carol certainly keeps us entertained and busy. I love it. Okay, let's put the spotlight on Carol Belke because she is going to tell us about um, month four in our mystery quilt. Okay. I have, um, I got a note from Linda Hooper. Linda Hooper let me know last night that clue number four, three, I'm losing, I'm losing track. Month four. Month, month four is on the website. Um, I hope everybody's having fun. The people I'm hearing from, and I hear regularly from different people, seems to be enjoying this. Um, I'm hopeful to get back in. If anybody has any questions, just really do just give me a yell. And um, I'm glad everybody's enjoying this. It's, it's nice to have something that you can spread out over time. And um, I hope the reveal will be exciting for you as well. Any, that's about it for me. Kind of low key today. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you very much, Carol. And Bonnie Butler, Sebald, our program chair, will tell you about our next couple of guest speakers. So let's watch Bonnie's presentation. Good morning, everyone. This is Bonnie Butler Sybil, your 2021 program chair. I have lots to tell you. First, thank you to the 19 members who have signed up for Jenny Lyons' Yes, You Can Free Motion Quilt Workshop. It is via Zoom and it is on Friday, April 16th. And we do have a couple of spots open. So if you'd still like to join, absolutely let me know. Jenny's presentation on Thursday the 15th is called Quilting is a Contact Sport. Did you know that we're all athletes? Jenny has a wonderfully humorous presentation to tell us why we're athletes. Be sure to Zoom uh, because as you may remember, we do not um, videotape our guest artist presentations. So if you miss it, you miss it, okay? Now, our May program, May, is Kelly Willie, who will be presenting Little Quilts, No Big Deal. That's on Thursday, May 20th. This is Kelly's expertise, so you will want to see her wonderful mini quilts. Her workshop on May 21st is also on Zoom, and she will be teaching us how to construct mini crazy quilts and how to do those intricate looking, very fabulous uh, embellishment stitches, okay? Remember, you can't just patch this uh, particular kind of quilt together. It is an art form. The $12 pattern is going to be included in your $40 workshop fee, okay? You can sign up for that May class now. Just get a hold of me by email, phone, text, whatever. Get your spot for this particular class because it's going to be wonderful. You get to use all those ties and velvets and tapestries that you've had hanging around. You've always wanted to do this. And so it's going to be a mini one, but you're going to get to use up all of those really wonderful fabrics you've been holding on. 
So the Guild Board has agreed to subsidize the workshops. We no longer have to make the minimum of 20 members to have a workshop be a go, okay? The minimum now is gonna be 12 to 15, and the board is going to um, kick in more money to the budget for programs so that we won't have to cancel any more classes, hopefully, okay? Um, I still need you to enroll as soon as you make up your mind so that we can uh, get set up and uh, get the Zoom meetings put together. And I will send a notice via email through Sharon as soon as we meet our new minimums that you know it's a go, okay? That doesn't mean we won't take 20 people. I will take 20 people. I'll take 21 or 22 too, okay? Second big announcement. The board is very aware that during these trying times, it can be financially difficult for our members to pick which class they want when we've got so many really great ones. But, you know, we can't just keep forking out $40 every month. So the board has set up a scholarship lottery, okay? Now, the way this is going to work currently is that we still have to make our minimum of enrolled and paid members, 15 to 20 for each group, once that or each month. As soon as that's been reached, I will send an email, again, via Sharon, and tell you that the class is a go and that we are opening the list to scholarship people, okay? Now, this is a confidential list. Nobody's gonna know you're on it except me, okay? So you don't have to be embarrassed. You don't have to worry about it. It's you and me. You're gonna contact me however way you want. I'm gonna put a number next to your name and then 10 days before the workshop, I'm going to call either Elaine Ramirez, our program chair elect, or Ann Nolan, our past program chair, and ask them to pick a number, say, between six and 10, okay? And they will, and I will say thank you. And then I will go to my list, and the number that they picked, I will call that person and let them know that they won the scholarship. The scholarship will cover your class fees and your patterns, if there's any, it's not gonna cover your fabric. You gotta do that one yourself, okay? Again, totally confidential. You will not be um, put out there as the scholarship recipient. The only person who will tell them that you're the recipient will be you. My report to the board every month will be how many people signed up for the scholarship. No names, okay? Um, these two workshop issue, program issues, will be reviewed at the end of the year to see if they were successful, if they were wanted, um, if they were even needed, okay? Maybe everybody will sign up and, you know, pay their fees and nobody needs a scholarship. Okay, cool. But again, I still have to have 12 to 15 people enrolled and paid in order to open the scholarship, okay? Um, but Hopefully, we're not going to be canceling any more uh, of our speakers' workshops because we've lowered the minimum and the Guild Board is going to subsidize us. So um, please get back to me or any of our Guild Board members and let them know how you feel about this. If it's something you totally agree with and want to support and want to see going forward, terrific. Let us know that. If you think it's a waste of time, waste of money, let us know that too. Okay, so I will um, see you in two weeks for Jenny Lyons' presentation and workshop. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Bonnie. The issue the board was worried about was there are times when we only had like 12 people signed up for a class. And with only 12, we wouldn't be breaking even and we were going to have to cancel the class. And we didn't wanna do that. We know it's a learning curve. A lot of people have never taken a class online until you get used to it or wanna try it out. 
then you'll feel more comfortable and more people will sign up for the classes. So we were hoping this would really help. And then the scholarship was just kind of bonus. So, so if we had at least 12 in the class, then the class is definitely a go. And that's usually a no brainer. We can usually get easily get 12 in a class. We don't have to get 20 or 21, whatever. So let's continue. Oh, we have a very, very uh, special event today, Community Quilts, uh, Valley of the Moon Parade. So let's hear from our fabulous Community Quilts Committee. Hi there. Um, Welcome today. We're here to show you some of the quilts that are going to Valley of the Moon. I wanted to tell you a little bit about Valley of the Moon. It's a home to care for children and youth who are no longer safe with their parents or guardians. The home provides immediate temporary emergency shelter with caring professionals and volunteers in a peaceful, stable, supportive and nurturing group environment until a more permanent foster home or other appropriate placement can be arranged. When the kids arrive, they get to pick out a quilt of their own and they're loved by all the kids from very young all the way through the teenage years. And every year we give a hundred quilts to the Valley of the Moon. So we'll get to see some of them now. Thank you. 
Wasn't that fabulous? It just is amazing. Thank you, Community Quilts Committee, for all the hard work you put into this. And thank you to all of our guild members. Uh, you're going to make many, many children and adolescents and teenagers just so happy with those quilts. Thank you. Thank you. Jen Nielsen would discuss our new 2020 Opportunity Quilt. Let's put the spotlight on Jan. Take it away, Jan Nielsen. Okay, um, I'm so excited about that um, show because I thought we were gonna miss out on our parade this year and those quilts were just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So, um, and I didn't even know that we would even get to the point where we'd be able to uh, we uh, put our uh, opportunity quilt out because it's been in storage for over a year, um, thanks to uh, Vicki David. Um, so this started, uh, the idea started in 2019. 2019 we had, I think our guild challenge in that year was uh, to make something that represented Fiesta. So a lot of people made great little projects. And so I got an idea about a a pattern that I had. It was a pattern that um, some of you may know. Nancy Rink is a, is a pattern designer and a fabric designer. She's pretty well known in the quilting community. And so I've, I had this um, pattern of hers. It was called a new age. But I thought, you know, if we did that pattern and we did it in bright grunge colors, we could make a fiesta out of that quilt. So that's what the quilt is called. It's called the Fiesta. And um, <clears throat> the people who participated, uh, once, I, once I had that I, idea, I, I recruited some of our, because um, it had a lot of points in it. So I recruited some of our best uh, peacemakers in our guild to work on it. And that included uh, Jan Andrews, Janet Tonkin, Margot Pitter, Jana Ullman, Vicki David, uh, Nancy McDermott, and of course Janice Rogers did the label for us. And so once all the blocks were done, I put it together and I took it to my favorite quilter. Um, I have family in Arizona and so I took it down to Jessica Gamez at Jessica's Quilting Studio. She lives in Carefree, Arizona. And I I came across her from a friend of mine who had a quilt done by her years ago and it was awesome. And then one time I went to the quilt show in Phoenix um, and almost every single quilt that got first place in that show was quilted by Jessica. So um, <clears throat> I, I took Jessica the quilt and I said, we're naming this quilt Fiesta. See what you can, see what you can do with the quilting. And um, Jessica's very interesting. She's probably, I'd say in her maybe late thirties now. Um, she started long arm quilting with her mother when she was about 12. Her mother was, I think they were living in Pennsylvania at the time, and she got totally smitten with it. 
And she has been long arm quilting since she's been a teenager. She has a beautiful studio with two big long arm uh, machines, one for um, uh, special work and one for uh, to do the uh, pantographs. So uh, she's a fabulous quilter. And usually in her studio, she's got a long rack of quilts waiting to be quilted. People send her quilts from all over the country and some out of the country. And she's done many uh, opportunity quilts and obviously quilts that are uh, put in shows. So <clears throat> she's pretty amazing. And so this, uh, our group got together, made all the, um, all of the blocks and I put it together and, and uh, off it went to Jessica. It came back a few months later and then it went to Vicki's house to store. <laughs> And it's been there for a year now. So we're finally getting it out of storage. And uh, so everybody can take a look at it. I hope you like it. It's very bright. You might have to put your sunglasses on. <laughs> so that's it. You have a picture of it? Do we have a picture? Yeah. Did you want me to show that now, Janelle? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go okay. ahead and show the picture. Yes, let's unveil the quilt. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Well, it was 2020. <laughs> now it's 2021. We're going to have to send, have it, to back. send it back. Janice, Janice, <laughs> have, 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 have her redo the, the label. Yeah, yeah. So it's 83, so it's by, 83 90 by 98. 90. Yeah, yeah. I want to thank everybody. Everybody, everybody. especially our fearless, fearless leader. <laughs> Our vice president, Jen Nielsen, take a bow, Jen, or smile. Or... <laughs> there you go. Great job. And it just is beautiful. Um, and you're probably wondering now, what do we do with the quilt? Because we can't meet in person quite yes. yet, but we have until April 2022 to sell tickets. Uh, we're, Jan Andrews is planning to actually print the tickets up next week and then we'll start stapling them and what we envision doing is putting together a block of tickets in an envelope one block of tickets in an envelope for each person in the guild who's able to um you know who's in our area or who's able to sell them and we can hand them out as people come to um these um library uh, library and more days and we can actually ask people have volunteers to distribute them I'll be happy to distribute uh, envelopes to people who live in Windsor because I live in Windsor it is against the law it's a federal law we cannot mail them to you in the mail we can't have you send the money in the ticket stubs back to us but you'll be able to there'll be instructions in the envelope and if you can sell a block of tickets that would be fabulous and of course we're going to have mine. Oh, Jan Westerman said to everybody I've got my $20 ready I love it <laughs> that's cute so anyway we will get more information to you as soon as we get the tickets and um, Fran and Elena have both agreed to Francis and Elena have both agreed to do uh, to be the chair for the quilt and help get the tickets out and keep track we're not going to really track the tickets as long as when you turn in the ticket stubs the money is with them that's good enough I mean we could throw tickets in the air and it wouldn't matter because we wouldn't accept them unless the ticket stubs match the money we receive so we would love to be able to sell tickets a lot of them so keep in mind the drawing won't be until the first week in April 2022 and I suspect the way we're going we may be meeting maybe late fall maybe early next year so we have plenty of time to sell them so thank you very much Jan you did a fabulous so job I'm hoping that we can get it on display so people can actually see it at yes. maybe at Village or some of the uh, quilt stores initially um I don't know. 
That's right. that's in our plan for Village and yeah. Bolt and a few others. And they have in the past they've always been willing to sell tickets for us as well. So oh, good. good. So we can even, you know, if somebody wants to go in, they need more tickets, they can actually give them the tickets because it doesn't hurt anything as long as when we get them back, it's got the money with the stubs. So anyway, you'll get more information, but let's have a good year. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, mm -hmm. Dan. You did a fabulous job and your team was just amazing. It's just a beautiful. Course. They did a great job. They did. <laughs> Better than I could have done in all those points. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, that's, that's difficult for me. I can't hardly sit still, let alone do a point properly. So anyway, thank you. Let's move on to technique sharing workshop. Um, we have one that Lori Biondo has chosen for us. It's on continuous bias binding. Have you ever made a quilt with a scalloped edge or received one of the old fashioned grandmother's flower garden and go, and how do I put a, you know, how do I fit a, a binding on it that doesn't give? You need a bias binding. So Lori is sharing her favorite bias binding YouTube video with us with permission from the instructor. So let's see what our TSW chair, Lori Biondo has found for us to view. Okay, let me close a few screens here. Thank you, Anne. We had a lot of videos this time. Yeah, this time. yeah my brain is full. <laughs> my brain's my pretty, brain's pretty empty. empty. <laughs> okay, here we go. Look, it is so very easy. My name is Laura. And do you like to use a bias binding, but you don't like the cutting of the bias binding? Well, I have a technique that will use a little bit of folding and you can get an entire one yard cut, no different than if you'd be cutting it on the straight of grain. And I'm gonna use this technique with using a ruler that's already cut to a two inch, a two and a half and a two and a quarter inch measurement. It's just going to take the guesswork out of it, makes it really easy. And it's from Creative Grids. It is a bias binding simplified ruler. It's a nice straight ruler and it has a little 45 degree angle on it. I'm going to use this ruler, but you can use any ruler with this technique. This just really simplifies it. I want to cut my binding out of this one yard of black, but I'm going to show you two times, one with this brighter fabric so the camera will be able to see it better. Then I'll show you with the black. When you cut a bias, you need to go on the 45 degree angle. So you have threads running in this direction and threads running in this direction. You need to cut it down the center of those threads. By doing that, it actually makes your binding stronger and it lasts longer. The problem is, is getting a ruler to go from one end all the way to the other end. So what we need to do is fold it and cut it. The folding technique is going to be the same regardless if you use a fat quarter, a yard, even more than a yard. The technique and the folding is going to be the same. So I'm going to show you on this fat quarter, then I will show you on the black. The first thing I like to do is make sure the selvages are cut off and it's squared up. And I like folding it so that it's facing me. But for the camera, I'm going to fold it so as if you're standing here watching it. So to fold it with you standing here, you're going to take the one corner and you're going to fold it so that it runs straight along the top edge. And there is your 45 degree angle. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the top point and fold it back towards you. Just smooth it with your hands to make sure that there's no wrinkles. We need to continue to fold so that the piece is going to be small enough to fit on a ruler. So we'll take that top edge and fold it down so that all the folds are right on this angle. That is the folding technique. If it's really big, you're going to be able to take that bottom piece and fold it. And what you want is this piece here to be able to fit on a ruler. So let's fold the big black one now. 
So here is the one yard piece. It's been pressed and I have all of my edges cleaned up. And this is my longest area. I have a straight grain line going this way. I want to cut it on an angle. And as you can see, you would not be able to have a ruler to go all the way on a 45 degree angle. This is why folding it makes it really easy. So it doesn't matter if you fold either ends. If you're left-handed, you could do one side. If you're right-handed, you can do another. So you're going to take that one corner and you're going to fold it so that your edges are matching right up at the top. Just smooth it. You don't need to press it. You're going to take that other corner and you're going to fold it back to yourself. Match up the folded edges and just smooth it out. You're going to take that top fold and following the folded line here, you're going to fold it again. You can start cutting from here, but if it's still too big, fold it. And I like to fold it regardless. It just makes a nice little bundle to work with. So I'm going to take that end, which is close to you, holding both those pieces and bring it up. So I have all of these folds on that one edge. Now we're going to start cutting the bias strips. So the first thing we're going to want to do is cut off this folded edge. You're going to be able to take your ruler, line it up, and cut off that folded edge. I would definitely recommend to have a nice sharp blade to do this because you're cutting through quite a few layers of fabric. But that's where the time saving comes in. So I have all of that fold cut off and I can throw that away. From here, you're going to just cut your strips. So depending on if you're left or right handed, you're just gonna be able to leave the fabric and cut it. But you might have to turn the fabric so that the ruler is going in the right direction. Now, if you can turn the mat, that's great. But if not, here's a little technique. Take a ruler, just slide it in underneath, and then you're able to turn the ruler and slide it back down. So I've not shifted my fabric at all. Now I'm able to cut. The ruler comes with three different measurements. So if you like a two inch binding, it does have a two inch mark, a two and a quarter or a two and a half. It is all marked on the ruler. So you're gonna be able to take that ruler and line it up to whatever measurement you want and cut. I like to do two and a quarter inch binding. So I'm going to use the two and a quarter inch line. What's really great about this ruler, it has that non-slip back. So it's gonna be very easy to handle. So line up the marking that you want and cut. And you have your first strip done. What's really nice about using this folding technique is your corners are already at a 45 degree angle. So when you bring them to the machine, they're already cut for you. From here, you're just going to be able to continue to cut your strips. If you find you're having a problem cutting, getting over that hump, there is a way you can start. You can start with your blade just in a little bit, start there, go back, and then go forward. And that's going to help get over that hump of that fabric. So I'm able to cut all of those strips without lifting the fabric, without having to work with that very large amount of fabric. The very end, you're going to find a small piece. So I usually put that aside. I have this beautiful stack that I can bring to the machine and just put on my lap and draw from as I'm sewing. You now have the angle cut perfect for you. You will be able to take this and match up right sides and just fold that over so that both right sides are touching. You want to use that straight line right along there to match up those edges. And this is one time that those dog ears are going to come in handy because we want a quarter inch hanging out from one side, a quarter inch hanging out from the other. And that will give us that perfect straight line to follow on the machine. So when you start stitching, you're going to be able to put your sewing machine needle right there in that corner and stitch down right off, which means when you come to the end, you're gonna come right off on that corner. Just remember you need to come into that corner and come out of that corner. Press that seam open and it's going to save the bulk right inside that binding. I'm going to fold that dog ear back and you're going to be able to see that straight line. 
Once you have it pressed, you can cut off the ears if you'd like, or just leave them. When that's pressed open, take the binding, fold it in half so that the seams are inside, and press it right in half. And there you have your perfect bias binding. There's a few other features that are really good about this ruler. Number one, the 45 degree angle that is cut there. When you put your binding on your quilt and you come to the end, if you want to cut and join at that 45 degree angle, that's already done for you. The other great feature is it has the non-slip back, which really helps with the cutting. And you don't have to worry about losing the paper directions with this ruler because the directions are printed right on the ruler even how you need to fold it. So this makes it really easy. I find this ruler is really great to have in your ruler collection. Not only to do the bias binding, but for the simple reason is it's pre-cut at two and a half inches. Two and a half inches is a very popular measurement in quilting. When we're cutting our fabric, we need to make sure that the ruler is right on that two and a half inch measurement. You're off a quarter inch, your strips are going to be off. So this is already pre-cut to two and a half inches. And because that has the two extra lines there for two and a quarter and two inches, there's not a lot of lines to look at and count with. So it is a quick ruler to be able to cut strips at two inches, two and a quarter, and the popular one at two and a half inches. And the bonus is you have a 45 degree angle. If you ever need to trim a block a quarter inch down, that little quarter inch edge is great because the entire quarter inch has a non-slip back so the fabric does not shift from underneath. And you can still use this ruler if you're going to use your binding on the straight of grain. Because it has those three popular measurements, you're going to be able to just put the ruler down and cut. No different than using it for the bias. Even though it's called Bias Binding Simplified, I think it's just a simple ruler to use. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now. I want to thank Lori I think, for, um, for putting that, uh, picking out that TSW for us. And there's more than one way to do bias binding. And we actually have an affiliate, Marion Drain, who's got a wonderful YouTube video with a totally different technique. So uh, one uses a ruler, hers does not. Um, so you might want to check that out too. But this meeting was brought to you by Peter Rabbit, Rabbit, Ann Nolan, Elaine Ramirez, Linda Hooper, and many, many hardworking guild members. We do have a workshop coming up in two weeks. Excuse me, a speaker meeting in two weeks in the workshop the day after with Jenny Lyon. Um, and I want to remind you, don't go away. You're welcome to stay on Zoom and sew with us until 2 p.m. today, if you like. I'm wishing all of you a safe Easter break, Easter spring break, um, and hoping that you get to see your loved ones. So I'll see you back on April 15th. And be sure and check out the new Stitch in Times newsletter, which I believe is coming out either today or in the next few days. I asked him to hold it back until we release the Opportunity Quilt. But you're going to see a lot more on the website. Um, and thank you, Jim Jensen, for all of our wonderful newsletters. They are so much fun. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for being here and you're welcome to stay and sew. <laughs>